This is Eagle Al, and today I will be talking about DeAndre Swift, Skip Bayless, compare him to Taylor Swift, and we also got an update on Lane Johnson. And trust me, it's great news, but let's get straight into it. All right, so before we get straight into it, Eagles fans, are we overreacting? Are we overreacting just a little bit? You know, saying this, saying that about the Eagles, or we might go three and four under this stretch and this and that. Are we overreacting just a little bit? Because these are the numbers through six weeks of football from last year's team and this year's team. So last year's team scored 147 points, 2,367 yards what uh average 5.6 yards per play 2023 the numbers are basically the same it's not the worst thing in the world trust me we lost to the jets and that feels terrible but to say oh we about to just lose and lose and lose and lose i, I just try to compare it to other teams you know lions loss twice i believe um 49ers got their first loss, so we still tie for the NFC first place, and we get a chance to play them as well. Now, do I agree with a lot of people? Even I'm saying this, this was an opportunity for us to really take over. Absolutely. Um, also, this is our record when Brian Johnson or Nick Seri, I don't know who's calling these plays because I think Nick Seriani said he called a bad play and it was an interception on him. Um, Nick Sirianni is not the best play caller, but this is how I look. No, we don't feature the running backs, you know, since I'm about to get into this next segment about Taylor Swift thing. But if you don't give the ball to the running backs, it's almost guaranteed we're going to lose. Now, I get the game plan. They down three cornerbacks. I get it. Throw the ball. It should be a 400-yard, 500-yard passing day. And unfortunately, it wasn't that. You know, um, our identity, no matter how many cornerbacks is out there, our identity is running the ball. We just completely strayed away from it. And so let me get into the topic. Taylor Swift, Skip Bayless, really? But let me go ahead and play the clip of him saying this. And Swift, I, I think Taylor Swift could have run for more yards than their new Swift did yesterday because I never liked him at Detroit. I, I, so there, now, there's a reason why Detroit got so, rid of him. So now, yeah, I, I, you know, and and here we came again. And, and I'm looking at this. And yes. the Eagles, who prided themselves on taking care of the football, gave it up four times to Zach Wilson and company. Man. Zero times, four to zero. Well, you're going to lose the game. It's but, not but it's that good. hard to recognize and see, man. Skip mm -hmm. said something though. They didn't have these problems last year. They looked, uh, you, you, you look like he had one damn game. Year. You look invincible. This is how I know Skip Bayless is a box score watcher. You know, he said he watched every game at the same time, this and that. There's no way he left that game and was like, yo, DeAndre Swift is bad, unless he's turned to the game and seen the fumble. But you don't leave that game saying DeAndre Swift is bad. You know, we barely ran the ball and it was more dump offs than anything because I think he caught like eight catches or eight passes, I should say, for about 40 yards and a touchdown. So he was more of a receiver yesterday than a running back yesterday. It And like this is how again, this is how, you know, he really don't watch the games. He read the box score. He's saying this is why Detroit traded him, this and that. But. I don't even have to pull up the numbers. I know DeAndre Swift's numbers are better than the guy they got in Dallas, Tony Pollard. They wish they could have a DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift is going to bounce back um, and have a great game. Even though, to me, again, this game wasn't that bad. Now, that turnover was unlike him. But other than that, man... DeAndre Swift did not play a bad overall game. So to compare him to Taylor Swift and all this and all that, I think that was a disrespectful. I think that was very disrespectful. And it's crazy how the Cowboys fans are talking about the 49ers and the Eagles. But so the 49ers just blew y'all out 42 to 10. Y'all literally should not even speak a word to the 49ers. 
and we're in the lead in the division. Y'all lost to Josh Dobbs. Look, they play Monday night, so we're going to let them enjoy their, what, 15 minutes of fame of not winning, but just happy that their opponents or their virus lost. That's all they happy about. So again, man, um, Skip Bayless really doesn't watch the games. There's no way Keyshawn destroyed these dudes during the segment. Keyshawn Johnson destroyed them. Like, yeah, Michael Irvin's so happy. Skip Bayless so happy that the uh, opposing teams lost. But y'all play a game today. Y'all play a game today. And Kellen Moore going to want his get back. So enjoy your 15 minutes of fame now because all that's about to go out the window. We going to be happy that y'all lost. And y'all going to be three and three with a tough schedule ahead of y'all too. It is what it is. All right, so let's get into the Lane Johnson news. The Lane Johnson news. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip of what uh, Adam Schefter had to say about Lane Johnson. I was told last night it's not serious. Now, again, it's very easy for somebody else to say when somebody else is dealing with a high ankle that it's not serious. Limped off the field. The guy is an extraordinarily tough guy. Plays the offensive line. It's not like he has to run around like A.J. Brown or uh, DeAndre Swift. Could he miss time? Absolutely. Uh, would he miss as much time as a guy at another position? Probably not. Um, we'll see how that goes out. But the text I got last night was it was better than they thought, and they hope he's going to be okay, and we'll see. Not that serious. It's not that serious, his ankle injury. And I'm also hearing that he's pushing to play against the Miami Dolphins, which is Awesome, 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 awesome. Because Lane Johnson, we're 13 and 23 without him. We can't win games without Lane Johnson. But again, still, my point still stands. At some point, you're going to have to win games without Lane Johnson. You're going to have to figure out because Lane Johnson was in his 30s. He's going to retire soon. And that's just, that game was a reality check. Like, we don't have a replacement for him in the building. There's going to be some problems. We got two replacements for Jason Kelsey, but really none for Lane Johnson because we don't know what Tyler Steen got. Tyler Steen's more of a guard and a left tackle. Maybe they could try him at right tackle. I know Nick Sirianni saying other things in his press conference about Jack Driscoll, this and that. But at the end of the day, you got to see who else is. Well, don't see who else is out there. You got to see who you got in house. Definitely got to see who you got in house for that right tackle position. And I think it's Tyler Steen. You don't pick a guy like that in the third round just to bench ride for the next two, three years or play behind Jordan Malata for his career. No, you got to give him an opportunity to see what he got. Now, um, but again, Nick Sirianni talking some other junk in his press conference saying, yeah, we believe in Jack Driscoll. He's going to pick it up. We've seen this and seen that. I'll be telling you what I've seen with my eyes. A lot of pressures and a lot of potential sacks on that side. That's what I've seen with my own two eyes. This is not training camp where the reporters put out tweets. No, I've seen it in the game with my own two eyes and gave up a lot of pressures and potential sacks and, and sacks in general. Gave up too much. I'm not even asking him to play at a Hall of Fame level, but man, you got you got to step up. And I would blame Hurts a little bit. When you rewatch it a little bit, and I know a lot of people was telling me in the comments too, like Jalen Hurts was holding the ball just a little too long, but he's used to that Lane Johnson Hall of Fame type play. What Hurts got to understand is that the right side, your right side is gone. You know, you you're not going to have Hall of Fame play. You're going to have a average regular right tackle playing against a dominant defensive line. So um, do Jack Driscoll deserves all the blame for that right side? Most of it. I mean, most of it. But at the same time, Jalen Hurts got to know his personnel too. Like, I right, this ain't Lane Johnson. This is Jack Driscoll. Got to get the ball out of my hands faster. But the routes they were calling was taking long as hell to develop long as hell to develop so yeah man um I, I think i'm starting to turn on nick sirianni more than brian johnson anytime i hear a bad play come up you know who take accountability for it nick sirianni 
And I will say this. The first couple drives, play calling was really good. What happened in the second half? Did Nick Sirianni think he had to take over and start messing it up? We got to see who calling these plays at certain points. Because I believe the game was close. Nick Sirianni didn't believe in Brian Johnson. And he made it worse. That's what I think happened. That's what I'm starting to think happened, man. And remember, Nick Sirianni was a terrible play caller. Remember, he was like, man, I'm going to just get that jump to Shane Steichen. And then that's when Shane Steichen took our offense to the next level. But is Nick Sirianni taking back play calling? It's time to blame him. I'll probably talk about that more tomorrow. Now I get my morning segments. Um, but, hey, man, what do you think? Of how do you feel, man, about the news today? I know the Lane Johnson eased us a bit. Again, I'm hearing he's pushing the play. Sunday, we will see. Um, since the ankle injury is not that serious, but if it's something that can, you know, re-injure or whatever, just let them sit out. We still got a long season ahead of us. And the Taylor Swift thing is that disrespectful. But this is Eagle Al. I'm a, 